Hello! Welcome back to our Irish Pagan series. My name is C. Oleg Wildridge, and I am part of Hemlock Vale's Protogrove ADF. This uh, installment of the Irish Pagan series is going to talk about, the, briefly, the triple goddess the Morrigan, for she is really important to Irish paganism and a lot of people's practices. You'll find her a lot um, being worshipped in Irish pagan spaces. Now, I'm going to be uh, using a lot of unverified personal gnosis, which means my experiences with the Morrigan, as well as things that I have gotten from the lore, legends, and folklore of Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man. And I will try to point out when my um, personal gnosis, my, my experience, comes in. Um, but let's begin with just a quick recap. The Morrigan is a member of the Tuatha de Danann, who are the Garden of the Gales. They are the Garden of Many Skills, who live on the other in the other world beneath the earth or within the mounds or across the sea and are associated with the good people the fairies um, they are also gods associated with sovereignty and magic which is really important when we're thinking about the morrigan who in, exemplifies that kind of goddess also to understand uh, is that as one of the deities of the tuatha de Danann, probably part of the agreement that Amurgan Gulingel, the bard leader of the of the uh, Sons of Meal, the Gaelish, Gaelic people, made with the good people and the Garden of the Gaels, uh, where the Tuatha Dé Danann became, became their gods and took over the under-earth portion or across the sea, the other world portion of the world, uh, where they went into the mounds and were conflated with the fair folk. And the Morrigan is one of these deities. So who is she? Well, she's a triple goddess of war, sovereignty, and fate, um, dealing a lot with the magic and power of sovereignty, the ability to rule oneself, have freedom and rights within oneself to make choice, as well as war, death, and sorcery. Her symbols are often ravens and crows, especially the hooded crow, which is native to Ireland and parts of Europe. Um, and these tend to show up in multiples in my experience a flock of crows or a, uh, especially three reminds me of the morrigan or she's actively trying to seek my attention um the triplicates have many combinations but often it's danu or anu macha and bav who we'll talk about a little bit moving forward but sometimes danu is admitted and it's just morrigan macha and bav as a triplicate they are sorceresses of the Tuatha Dé Danann. During the wars, they are often cited as being not only fighters, but sorcerers who used magic to help destroy the enemies of the Tuatha Dé Danann. You can call on the Morgan for many things, such as death, war, fate, and sovereignty work. All these things are within her purview, but a lot of people will attest that she is a very intense, dark goddess. And this intensity can come out in imagery. It can be in your relationship to her. Some people have difficulties with uh, boundaries with the Morrigan or boundary pushing. But I wouldn't use dissuade you from working with the Morrigan, especially during high days, because she is such an important goddess to Irish paganism, being the, the prime goddess of war and magic and fate uh, and sorcery. So those magical workings, those things that are really important to pagan practice. Something we also have to understand is the family of the Morrigan. The Irish people were all very um, interconnected clan type society. So also the Garden, the Tuatha Dé Danann, followed this system of having extended families and that clan being important. So the Morrigan, in, at least in my experience, is married to the Dagda. Um, she also has a son, Meche, who I don't know who his father is. Uh, he was killed for his heart containing a poisonous serpent that could destroy Ireland. Um, another important um, of her children is Bridget, who is Bridget, Bridget, and Bridget, the three three triple goddesses there of poetry, um, priesting, and uh, blacksmithing, excuse me, um, who had a son, Ruadan, with Brace, and the children of Twiran, the, the sons of Twiran, Brian, Iochar, and Iocharba, who are all important to the stories of Ketkat Maitura, which is one of the founding myths of the Tuatha Dé Danann. I believe also that the some of the other children of the Dagda may be her children as well, including Bov Derg, Dianghecht, Kermet, Aeth, Anya, um, but not Angus Og, who is 
son of the Dogda and Boan, so half brother to the Dogda's other children. Um, it's important to notice, I think, that the Morrigan is Dion Kek's mother, at least in my opinion. Be and then his children, Kian, Ku, Ket Ketan, Ermij, and Miach. Um, Kian had a, had three sons with Ethne, one of whom survived, and that's Lu. However, that having two brothers is probably just meaning he is a triple god as well, so Lu times three. And then Lu had Kukulin, so the Morrigan would be Kukulin's great great grandmother in this formulation of family. Um, and we can use these these understandings of the clan to maybe connect more with these deities and humanize them and understand them a little bit better, as well as know who we can call to work together in what ways, because they are father and child or mother and child, um, parent, married, in a relationship, have had children with each other, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just a very basic outline of some of the members of the clan that the Morrigan is part of. Now let's talk about the different parts of the Morrigan. So I usually include Danu or Anu. This is sometimes not the case. You'll find people disagree about what different goddesses form the triplicate of the Morrigan. I believe it is Danu or Anu, Macha, and Bav. So Danu is the Earth Mother and the Clan Mother. In a uh, Wiccan sort of concept of the Maiden Mother Crone, she would be the Mother Archetype. And she is a goddess of land, sovereignty, and motherhood. She is the living land that supports, surrounds, and takes care of us. She is the progenitor, and she is the goddess who the Tua de Danan, Danan being Danu, are named for. She is one of the sorceresses, but represented also by the cow and the color white. Um, she's also connected to rivers as well. The Danube in Germany and, and other parts of Europe is named after Danu because the Celtic peoples lived there for a while and named this river after Danu. You can call on her for sovereignty work, land work, birthing, parent work, life and fertility. She is a very motherly and um, nurturing goddess in my experience and the experience of other people who I have talked to. She is sometimes, like I said, separated from the Morrigan and it is replaced with the triplicate of Morrigan Machabav, but I see her as part of the Morrigan triplicate. The next goddess is the, is the maiden within the uh, Wiccan conception of the triple goddess, and in the Morrigan's case is Macha, the horse maiden. She is a goddess of magic, sovereignty, war, and horses, um, especially that sovereignty bit. Um, she is a sorceress, attested to be a, a good athlete and fast runner, and represented by the color red and horses. I associate her with, specifically with a red horse symbol. You can call on her for sovereignty work, magic related to horses or horse-like attributes, birth magic, and possibly even like athletics, exercise, uh, building the body into, into a great tool. But she is a maiden of the land who, through marriage and, and sexual relations, gives sovereignty to rulers and leaders. And so she may be a great um, figure to help you regain your personal sovereignty. And then finally, we have Baiv or Bav, who is the old woman, the crone part of the Maiden Mother crone triplicate. Um, and she is the goddess of death, war, and magic. She's represented by ravens and crows and is embodied by the hooded crow, as well as being a sorceress, and the washer at the ford, which is an Irish legend where sometimes people going off to battle would see a, a crying old woman washing clothes and armor at the ford, predicting death in battle. Um, and as a crow goes and swoops down to eat the slain, Baev is seen as a patroness of war and death, as well as the magic that comes with death. And is represented by the crow and the and the color black. You can call on her for death-related workings, as well as war or conflict, fate, and death divination with her washer at the ford. She's possibly cognate to the the Gaulish goddess Katabodua, so might be related to the Gaulish goddess Katabodua. She is also a very intense goddess, I think, in the experiences that myself or people I know have had, because she is so linked to the visceral power of war and death. Now, the holiday of the Morrigan is Samhain. It is a time of death and dying off of nature for winter. It is the new year in the Celtic calendar. 
and it begins the dark half of the year, it is when the dead return and the fairies move to their winter homes. And it is a time when the Morrigan and the Dagda coupled during the stories of the Ka Kaka Maitura. It is a time when we can honor our ancestors. Uh, we can set out a place for them at silent suppers called dumb suppers and commemorate them, as well as give ritual and sacrifice to the Morrigan for her protection because she is so linked with death and winter is a time of death. There are also some other traditions linked to Samhain, like carving of radishes, which eventually became the jack-o'-lantern tradition. Um, there is also guising, which became the Halloween dressing up traditions um, to either scare away or trick the spirits that might be about, because this is a time when the spirits are very active around us, at least in the Gaelic conception of how those things worked. So the Samhain is a great time to call upon and give honor to the Morrigan as it is her special holiday. Now, I know this was a very short overview, and there's so much more that we could talk about in relation to the Morrigan, but this is a good introduction to get you started so that you can continue your research and learning and connection to this great goddess. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye!